You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 21st of September. India suspends visa services for Canadians amid heightened tensions. IMF chief says Pakistan should tax the rich to protect the poor. And Nepal's PM they held to embark on official visit to China. And now for all the details, amid the diplomatic standoff between India and Canada over the Khalistan row, New Delhi on Thursday confirmed a temporary suspension of visa services for Canadians. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson said the decision was taken in the aftermath of continued air threats to the Indian mission in Canada, which have disrupted their normal functioning. He said the visa restrictions will also apply to Canadian citizens applying through a third country. Notably, Canada in the past has also refused visas to Indians, particularly former security officials with stints in Punjab, Jammu and Kashmir and northeastern states. You are aware of the security threats being faced by our High Commission and consulates in Canada. This has disrupted their normal functioning. Accordingly, our High Commission and consulates are temporarily unable to process visa applications. We will be reviewing the situation on a regular basis. Adding further, Bakshi said, under the pretext of freedom of expression, Canada is condoning hate crimes, including incitement of violence against Indian diplomats. He said providing safe havens to fugitives wanted by India is also among the concerns and added that New Delhi expects better steps by Ottawa to address them. Tensions between the two countries had escalated earlier this week following a comment from Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau linking Indian government to killing of a Khalistani terrorist, which India has called absurd and motivated. Now there are escalating threats against the safety and security of uh, Indians, uh, who Hindu Indians. And I think that once Canada has unleashed this, they should be very conscious of the dangers they're provoking, including, frankly, for... Uh, importing a kind of extremism that doesn't exist in India anymore in Punjab into their country instead, which is very, very unfortunate. And the Indian Parliament has approved a landmark bill reserving a third of its seats in the lower house and state assemblies for women to boost female participation in politics that had been disproportionately low for decades. The legislation, Nari Shakti Vandan Adhiniyam, introduced by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government in the special session of the parliament, was unanimously passed by lawmakers. However, during the discussion, several opposition MPs also demanded a quota within the quota for women from the marginalized community. The legislation, which will be functional after an exercise of delimitation, now requires approval from at least half of the state assemblies across India. कोशिश का तो कर रही है मैं ऐसा नहीं कहूंगी कोशिश तो सरकार ने की हर पार्टी ने साथ दी है तो यूनानिमसली एक अच्छा मैसेज गया लेकिन इंप्लीमेंटेशन होना चाहिए ना मैंने आपको चेक तो दे दिया लेकिन उस पर डेट नहीं है साइन नहीं है तो चेक का क्या करूं मैं Moving on, IMF Chief Kristalina Georgieva on Wednesday met Pakistan's caretaker PM Anwarul Haq Kakkar and discussed his country's economic dire situation and emphasized more tax collection from the rich. Taking to X, Georgieva said both the sides agreed on the vital need for strong policies to ensure stability and the protection for the most vulnerable in Pakistan. The global lender earlier in June approved a $3 billion loan to Pakistan which saved it from default. Pakistan is dealing with a balance of payment crisis and requires billions of dollars in foreign exchange to finance its trade deficit and repay its international debts in the current financial year. While moving on, a research analyst raised concern over Pakistan openly recruiting mercenaries and terror organizations to pursue its own interest and political agenda in South Asia. A report. Lucy played a research analyst from think tank FSAS during the UNHRC session in Geneva came down heavily on Pakistan for openly recruiting mercenaries and terrorist organizations to pursue its political agenda in South Asia. She said the removal of Pakistan from the FATF Grey List should not make the international community less vigilant as terror organizations continue to flourish on its soil. Among the list of UN-designated terrorist entities present on Pakistani soil, the most preeminent terrorist group supported by the military are the Lashkar-e-Taiba and Jaish-e-Mohammed. 
while officially banned, they continue to flourish within Pakistan's borders under the aegis of the Pakistani army for action abroad. The use of these proxy forces exacerbates the risk of violations of human rights and undermines humanitarian principles. India has long raised concern over cross-border activities of Pakistan-based terror organizations, which it says are aided by Islamabad to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Sri Lanka on Wednesday signed the instrument of accession to the treaty on the participation of nuclear weapons at the UN headquarters in New York on the sidelines of the 78th session of UNGA. Taking to ex-Foreign Minister Ali Sabri said, Sri Lanka by becoming the 69th state party to the treaty has once again reaffirmed its long-standing commitment towards nuclear disarmament for international peace and security. The deal prohibits state parties from developing testing, producing, manufacturing, acquiring, possessing or stockpiling nuclear weapons or other nuclear explosive devices. Sri Lanka also ratified the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty after 27 years. And moving on, the Nepal government on Thursday announced Prime Minister Pushkamal Dehel's week-long official visit to China following an invitation from his Chinese counterpart, Li Qiang. PM Dehel, who is currently in New York, will arrive in Beijing on 23rd of September, where he is scheduled to hold a meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping and bilateral talks with his Chinese counterpart. The visit comes as China has made repeated statements over Nepal's growing ties with the U.S. and its deep relations with India. New Delhi, in particular, has invested billions in Nepal in recent years to counter the Chinese influence among its smaller neighbors. And as people across India are celebrating the 10-day-long Ganesh Chaturthi festival, marquees of different themes are grabbing eyeballs. Take a look. Different theme-based pandal or marquees across India during the 10-day-long Ganesh Chaturthi festival are attracting devotees who are attending prayer ceremonies. While people in Mumbai city have installed models of the local metro and the Vande Bharat train in their homes, along with the idol of Lord Ganesha, a marquee in Patna city has been made inspired by ISRO's Chandrayaan-3 lunar mission. As Indians continue to celebrate the successful feat to the moon, a model of the Chandrayaan rocket has been placed in the pandal which is captivating visitors. इस बार विशेष तौर पे हम लोग को इसरो की जो टीम है उसको हमारे पूरे हिंदुस्तान को उन पर नाज है उन्होंने इतना हमारे हिंदुस्तान का नाम गर्वान्वित किया पूरे वर्ल्ड के पटल पर डंका बजाया अपना हिंदुस्तान का तो विशेष तौर पे हम लोगों को हम लोगों ने इसरो की टीम को बधाई देने के लिए इस गणेश पूजा के पंडाल में हम लोगों ने लालबाग के राजा की प्रतिकृति तो है ही उनके साथ साथ इसरो का यहाँ पे थीम ये किया चंद्रयान थ्री का थीम यहाँ पे Meanwhile, with the objective to raise awareness on the importance of voting, a Hyderabad-based organization has designed a Ganesh marquee resembling a polling booth. A cutout of PM Modi and CM KCR has also been placed in the pandal, while the idol of Lord Ganesha is holding a Sengol in his hand. This year, as you all know, there are two elections in Telangana in 2-3 months. तो ये बार हमारा कॉन्सेप्ट है कि पोलिंग बूथ गणेश ये कॉन्सेप्ट हम ये साल चूज करने का सबसे इम्पॉर्टेंट ये है कि अपने हैदराबाद में एवरी ईयर पोलिंग का परसेंटेज देखे तो 50 52 परसेंट ही रह रहा उससे ज्यादा नहीं हो रहा